Thank you, Madam Mayor and Mr. Council President and Council people. Uh, I appreciate being able to come before you and talk just a little bit. Uh, as you said, my name is Clay Roy, and uh, I am uh, the Operations Director for the Church of Planned Parenthood, or TCAP. And I'd like to start up by just reading something. All we say to America is to be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China, or even Russia, or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these Ill illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that, that the greatness of America is the right to protest for that right. Martin Luther King Jr. A couple of weeks ago, or however long it's been, I don't know how long it's been, that I came uh, and addressed the council. My purpose then, my purpose now, is to let you know that it is not and has not ever been our intention to disrupt anything, okay? We simply meet, we sing, and we pray. I am not saying that it is not possible that disruptions have occurred at, in different facilities uh, around the city. However, I am saying that that is not TCAP. I'm not saying that any of those that I necessarily disagree with, but that is not TCAP. Uh, we are a peaceful group simply having a church service. We may not agree, we, not, not, we may not, we do not agree with what goes on at some of the healthcare facilities here. Uh, we believe that every person has a right to life. <coughs> However, anything that you're seeing that may show that we are disrupting or that we are accosting people, that is not us. And, th th and I know there is no video showing that our group is doing that. We may have people in our group that do that at different times, but they don't do that when, they're, when we're there. We hope that the citizens of Spokane see us for what we are, peaceful. We believe that our battles are fought through worship. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anna Bohach. I live in the Spokane Valley area. I'm a pro-life activist and a member of the church at Planned Parenthood. I believe Planned Parenthood is actively trying to purchase members of the Spokane City Council in order to suppress, suppress free speech, peaceable assemblage, assemblage, and religious freedom of American Christians simply because they are an inconvenience to the corporation's agenda that exploits vulnerable women, sexually grooms children, and claims to be a women's health clinic yet refuses to define what a woman is. It is well known that Planned Parenthood lavishly donates to politicians in order to secure political influence and contacts in government. With just a small amount of research gleaned from the Washington Public Disclosure Commission, I discovered that five of the seven city council members here tonight have received large campaign donations from Planned Parenthood's Political Action Committee, as well as NARL Pro-Choice and the chairpersons of the Smith Barbieri Progressive Fund who happened to sit on the board of Planned Parenthood's PAC and donated $500,000 to the construction of Planned Parenthood's Spokane Clinic that is named after them. Councilwoman Kinnear, you received $950 from Planned Parenthood. Can, um, Ms. can you just address it? You can mention okay. that, but just address okay, just me, just address please. you, I'm sorry. Thanks. Councilwoman Kinnear has received $950 from Planned Parenthood and $500 from NARL. Councilwoman Burke, you've received $500 from Planned Parenthood. Councilwoman Mum, you received $1,400 from Planned Parenthood. You're addressing me directly, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yeah. I have no problem with this as public record. You need to address him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I just was reading it. Sorry. Um, edit, edit your your. Okay. Received uh, uh, $1,400 from Planned Parenthood and $250 from NARL. Councilwoman Stratton received most the most with seventeen hundred dollars coming from Planned Parenthood and one thousand nine hundred dollars coming from the Smith Barbieri um, um, chairpersons 
uh, of the Smith Barbieri Progressive Fund. Council President begs, you have received $500 from Planned Parenthood, and in this last election, you received $1,000 from Mr. Don Barbieri of the Smith Barbieri Fund. And in total, you have all received $7,845 from Planned Parenthood, their leaders, and their allies. Bribery, graft, and quid pro quo have no place in a free country. I ask the city council members to remember who and what they represent, and not those whose pockets they are so deeply lost in. Thank Hello, and thank you. Uh, my name is Caleb Collier. I'm a representative for the John Birch Society. I'm also the assistant director for the Church of Planned Parenthood. And I had the pleasure of serving on the Spokane Valley City Council. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, for all of you for your willingness to serve. I do appreciate that. I did want to address something um, on recusal. Now, this comes from cityethics.org. And I will just be reading from uh, section one, subsection three. It follows as such. An official or employee must refrain from acting on or discussing formally or informally a matter before the city. If acting on the matter or failing to act on the matter may personally or financially benefit any of the persons or entities listed in subsection one of this section. Now subsection one of this section says, an official or employee may not use his or her personal position or office or take or fail to take any action or influence others to take or fail to take any action in a matter which he or she knows or has a reason to believe may result in personal or financial benefit not share, not share with a substantial segment of the city's population for any of the following persons or entities. Letter F in this says, a person or entity from whom the official or employees has received an election campaign contribution of more than 200 in the aggregate during the past election cycle. Returning to subsection three, if a board or agency, oh, sorry, excuse me, such an official or employee should join the public if the recusal occurs at a public meeting or leave the room if it is not at a public meeting. Moving to C, if a board or agency member is requested to recuse himself or herself with respect to a matter for the reason that he or she has a conflict of interest by another member, a party to the current member or matter, or anyone else who may be affected by a decision relating to this matter. The members must decide whether to recuse himself or herself. If the member decides not to recuse himself or herself, the unchallenged members must consider any relevant evidence concerning such claimed conflict of interest as defined in this code and vote whether or not to allow the request or and require that the member refrain from participating in the manner. Rule of necessity, if a recusal would leave a board with less than a quorum capable of acting or if the official or employees is the only person authorized by law to act the officials or employees must disclose the nature or the circumstances of the conflict to the Ethics Commission and ask for an advisory opinion. I will leave you with just a quick quote coming from Evelyn Beatrice Hall. It says, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Thank you very much for your time. I just want to thank you for allowing us to speak today. I'm here to advocate for the return of the law of God in public policy, namely, by making Spokane a sanctuary city for the preborn. I remember when the Supreme Court took prayer and Bible out of schools in the 60s. Then in the 70s, they found a right to murder innocent babies in the womb. They believed the lie that a woman has a right over her own body, even if, it's, even if she is killing another person having different DNA. We have dehumanized the preborn, calling them blobs and fetal tissue, in order to systematically slaughter them in places like Planned Parenthood. It was the same dehumanizing of black people in the 1800s, calling them subhuman, that led to the Dred Scott decision of 1857, which gave white people the right to oppress blacks. SCOTUS was wrong then, they are wrong now, concerning Roe versus Wade. <coughs> It was the same dehumanizing that the Jews endured when Hitler would call them pigs, dogs, and subhuman, which led to the Holocaust. We look back at the slaveholders and the Nazis with deserved contempt, disdain, and even hatred. Future generations will look back at our generation in amazement and wonder how were so many people deceived to dehumanize and slaughter so many. The key point to remember here is the body inside of a pregnant woman is not her body.
This brings us to our second national sin, homosexuality. God calls it an abomination in Leviticus 20:13. I believe God loves the homosexual, the adulterer, the thief. He even loved me when I was in my sin. His desire is to rescue rebels, to clean us up, and put us on a good path that has purpose and light. The Apostle Paul wrote about this rebellion in Romans 1:27. And likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men working that which is perverted, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was just. When people tolerate such a rebellion, they bring a curse upon their children. It is an outrage that this city allows its libraries to be used by unstable, twisted minds to read to its children. Your children are being preyed upon, the drag queen's attempt to sexualize your ch children is a step toward normalizing pedophilia. <clears throat> These two national sins are evidence of the greatest sin we have forsaken God and his law. Hello, my name is Jacqueline Gallion. Have you ever asked yourself why people feel so convicted to show up outside of Planned Parenthood, sometimes in extreme weather conditions? to pray for the unborn and for the healing of women who endure the psychological trauma of abortion. Sometimes I don't hear, or it's something that I don't hear being discussed, is the deep emotional trauma that women are left with. My mom had an abortion between my oldest brother and I. She was always very open and honest with us about the, her pain and regret. It's something she deals with daily, nearly 40 years later, and abortion can't be undone. It's the trauma is real. She became a strong pro-life advocate. My siblings and I spent time in our childhood holding signs that said former fetus outside abortion clinics. My mom's advocacy saved the life of many children, but the most important life she saved was my oldest son. The abuse, um, when I was 18, I was faced with an unplanned pregnancy, but because I knew the lies that are told, the deep emotional pain and trauma and regret abortion leaves women in, it wasn't even an option for me. And praise God, because today I have a healthy 18-year-old son. The abuse of leadership can be seen by weaponizing the government towards a group of people you don't agree with. But a pro, um, but a pro, uh, we've been, but as we've heard tonight, a prime example of this is to pay to play, and this must end. Let me point out that not one person who attended the church at Planned Parenthood has been arrested. You took an oath to uphold and defend the U.S. and Washington State Constitution. You, agree, uh, you represent all people, even those you don't agree with. The Constitution grants equal rights and protections. The First Amendment grants us freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the freedom to assemble, and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievance. The same people that don't want to give a voice to the unborn are the same people who want to silence those who want to be a voice for the unborn. What's next or who's next? Will you silence those who want to speak out against human trafficking? This isn't about right versus left. It is about right versus wrong. Freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor, but it must be demanded by the oppressed. Martin Luther King, Jr., thank you. Good evening, um, I'm Bonita Ott, and I'm a citizen that's concerned about maintaining our freedom of speech as it's set forth in the constitution of our country. Um, throughout the history of our country, there have always been people with differing opinions, and what makes our country great is that we have the freedom to express this. I'm asking that you please guard these rights and not let yourselves be influenced against the great constitution right, constitutional right of the freedom of speech that we have in our country. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Christine Stickelmeyer from Spokane, Washington. Um, I want to thank you all for allowing me this time to speak. I'd like you to consider a few things to clear up lies that have been told about people like me who attend the church at Planned Parenthood. I have a photo of a man who is apparently the manager of this Planned Parenthood location or in some kind of management position. On one occasion, he came out with a speaker system of his own blasting music in an attempt to drown us out. He played some very inappropriate songs due to the fact that we have children present. These songs were very sexually explicit. 
by him trying to drown us out totally runs counter to their objection of TCAP's music interrupting their patients. It, it is fairly evident that this, this shows it is not about being too loud, but it's about our message. Planned Parenthood doesn't like our message and they are going to go to every lengths to shut our mouths, to silence our voices. I would also say that the message is loud and clear that they want to do what they want to do, excuse me, that they want to do what they can to around, uh, work around our First Amendment rights to freedom of speech. If any of you were to attend one of our services, you'd see with your own eyes and hear with your own ears that we are beyond peaceful. We are there just like a Sunday church service. We are praising and worshiping God. We are making our voices heard in our country, a great free country, speaking out for the unborn, speaking for those who cannot speak. Planned Parenthood is a brand new building, and it was, was not soundproof. if it was not soundproof to mitigate the traffic noise from Indiana properly, that is not our fault. As we worship, we can still hear the traffic over us. Our decibel volume level, which we worked out with Spokane City Police, should not make us take the brunt of this oversight. We always bring our own sound meter to make sure we are within law. Lastly, would Planned Parenthood allow us, including our lawyers, to enter the building to register the decibels of our music versus traffic while we are holding services so one can see just how, as you say, we are loud? I think it would be evident that we are not loud. It is just Planned Parenthood trying to get around any current laws going at any length to stop us. This reeks of stepping on our rights of freedom of speech and freedom of religion being expressed on public property. Planned Parenthood is using you to silence TCAP. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Doug Spicklemeyer. I'm from Spokane, born and raised here. Um, I'm old enough, I was born in 54, where <clears throat> in my DNA, and I saw in all Americans' DNA was the right, or the sanctity of life. And so that there's three things that are, did, that this city needs to deal with. One, or should, I pray in your hearts, um, to give voice to those who are trying to protect the life at the church Planned Parenthood. Um, there's enough people that have talked about that. Um, but there are a couple more things. The lady talked about the, um, the 5G symposium coming up at Gonzaga. And I do hope that you all go and listen to that. I've done research on that. Um, I don't, I, even if there are, um, whatever laws that tell you, you have to give way to the communications, you need to fight for your citizens in this city. My research shows that it is very dangerous. The military uses the same technology. It's a truck mounted, it looks just like a big microwave dish to repel. Within 500 feet, it'll make you run because you feel like you're burning up. It only affects a very, Thin layer of your skin, but it is to repel. It's for riot and it's all for warfare. That's the same technology that the 5G is. It's a very short millimeter wave and it can travel through walls. Um, the companies that are pu putting this in have no research. They've done no testing on this. They say it's safe, but they have done no testing. That professor that is going to be at Gonzaga, it is a dangerous, dangerous um, technology. Um, the other thing is that I hope that this city is protecting its citizens when I hear that the, the uh, Sacred Heart Hospital is going to receive five people with coronavirus and that's putting your citizens again at risk. I think the city's got to step up and start fighting some of these things to protect your citizens. Sanctity of life, the unborn, from diseases brought in from other countries, as well as technologies that could be harmful to your citizens. I pray that you people look into it. In fact, you should be the first ones to look into it and in fighting for us. Thank you. And please help me pronounce your name better. When sure. Introduce That's yourself. Fine. Yeah. So it is Afshin Yakton. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. And I also did want to welcome uh, Councilwoman Wilkerson. I didn't get a chance to do that earlier. Uh, but I'm, I am here to address some of the misinformation that's being told 
about the church at Planned Parenthood. Some of it was kind of covered, so I'm sorry if I'm beating a dead horse here. But first of all, I just want to say that the people at the church at Planned Parenthood don't block entryways and they don't harass women going into the abortion clinic known as Planned Parenthood. That's a complete lie. What's happening is that there are different groups and different individuals that go in during the day in order to protest and to do sidewalk counseling and to preach. And those groups and individuals, which sometimes includes myself, I'm there on the ground sometimes during the day, those groups are not associated necessarily with the church at Planned Parenthood. In most instances, they're not, especially when you see different groups. You have abolitionists, you have pro-lifers, completely different groups. The ones that are holding the graphic signs and on the bullhorns and yelling and shouting out, that's a different methodology than the church at Planned Parenthood uses, completely different groups. They have every right to be there as well, uh, they have a First Amendment right also, but I just wanted to differentiate for you that it is a completely different group uh, that go there during the day. Now, at the Church at Planned Parenthood, first of all, it's at night. Okay, it starts at 5.30 at night. I have never once in that entire year that I've been going have seen one pa so-called patient enter into that facility uh, during that nighttime. Most of the abortions are scheduled early in the morning and as well as other services that, that they might be you know, giving chemical abortions with pills or whatever else. Um, so that all happens during the day. As there needs to be a separation. You need to understand that there's many different groups that are involved in these activism type things that are going on uh, here. And also, as I said, I've been there during the day. If, if you're too loud or if you're, you're blocking the entrance, within seconds, the security guard will come out and they will warn you that they're gonna call the police who will come and cite, cite you for dis making a disturbance. So all of those laws are already in place and they're being followed meticulously. I think the police are doing a great job at TCAP. We might have some disagreements on maybe the way they separate the groups and, and don't allow some dialogue to occur, um, but I think they're doing a great job there, and I didn't like seeing them also maligned by the spokesmen and other fake news kind of outlets that really don't take into account what's really going on here. Um, so, you know, there's, there's much more that, that I can say, but I'll just give you Proverbs 6 because I'm, I'm, I see I'm running out of time. But the Bible says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an okay. abomination unto him. That's the time. So, All right, thanks you so much. All right, I'll, I'll bring it next time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Chris Wakeman, East Baldwin Avenue. Uh, our city really does need an appreciation of that we are people who are given our life by God. In him we live and move and have our being. We're created to be people who are in God's image. And as we appreciate God, God will give us harmony and health. Jesus says that he's the one who uh, virtue comes out from Christ Jesus and heals us all. Praise God, he heals us all. And so uh, if we really are concerned about health, the Planned Parenthood, if you're killing babies, you're not concerned about their health. Uh, there are some ways in which Planned Parenthood operates like another health care facility. There was a time I was a uh, hospital chaplain of former life, <laughs> but <laughs> that the spiritual aspect of health, that uh, if we are godly, if we're people who pray, there's a, a great benefit to that will be a healthier society together. God says he inhabits the praises of his people. If we'll praise him together, uh, we might see these spiritual healings happening in a lot greater frequency. Remember the time that uh, our hospitals were, uh, because of an evangelist, uh, pretty uh, all patients were getting up and walking out. So that's possible if we'll praise God, give him the praise that is due unto his name. 
we have citizens and citizens, if, we, if we're citizens of heaven, if we understand that God is who gives us uh, how to live right and leads us to righteousness, then we'll be much better at being citizens for our city, for our families, for our schools. And uh, I pray that uh, this uh, keeping God out that is happening, especially in the public schools, keeping God out, and Planned Parenthood is showing themselves to be part of who is teaching the schools to keep God out, uh, and uh, we, if we'll keep God in, if we'll keep God in, those are the, there's not any uh, standard morality, and if we don't have morality, we won't have morale. If we have morality, it'll be from God, and we'll have good morale. We'll enjoy that we are a community that has that unity that's God-given. Blessing. Mike Abatey. In our generation, freedom of speech has slowly yet steadily been attacked by those who wish to suppress the truth. When our nation fails to trust in God, that is when our nation will fall. When the Founding Fathers left England, they're now searching for better land or riches to grow wealthy from. They're searching for freedom. In their mother country, they were put in prison for not following the Church of England and worshiping God in the way they saw fit. Our country was built on the belief of freedom of speech. If it was not for freedom of speech, which the patriots of America used to their advantage, during the American Revolution, it would not have gained support it had. The Federalist Papers, written by John Jay, Alexander Hamilton, and James Madison, and Common Sense, written by Thomas Paine, all were distributed among the American people. Even Patrick Henry's Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech was made known to his fellow patriots. Freedom of speech was vital to the birth of this nation, and I promise you, its importance has not diminished. If anything, its importance has grown since the birth of our nation. Because now we must remind those in government offices the importance of freedom of speech. The Declaration of Independence, our first founding document, gives the reason why our founding fathers found it necessary to dissolve our political bands to England. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. The second human right mentioned in this document is liberty. Liberty includes the liberty to speak freely without being in fear of what the government might do to suppress your beliefs. Right after the human rights, it mentions for whose benefits governments are put in place. It states, quote, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from consent of the governed. It is your job holding these offices to protect our rights. This includes freedom of speech. In the preamble of the Constitution, the reason behind why it's put in place is stated clearly. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessing of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. The blessings of liberty at its core is the freedom of speech. Ronald Reagan put it best when he said, freedom of speech is always only one generation from being extinct. I'd like to leave you with this verse from John 3.11. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not accept our testimony. Protect our rights to freedom of speech. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Hunter Beatty. Okay. All right. Thank you all for letting me speak today. If I were to ask anyone in this building right now if they can name a couple of characters from the Iliad, the Odyssey, War and Peace, or Tale of Two Cities, the numbers would probably be fairly low. But if I were to ask the same group if they could name five characters from the Bible, the numbers would skyrocket. And you see, I believe this reason is because the Bible has influenced mankind unlike any other book. At one point or another in your lifetime, you have heard of Adam, <clears throat> Eve, Moses, Noah, Jonah, and Jesus. And the reason for that is because of the Bible's influence. Now, sayings such as raising Cain, hit the nail on the head, by the skin of my teeth, let the chips fall where they may, and I stuck my neck out for you, all have their roots in the Bible, coming from Genesis, Judges, Job, Ecclesiastes, and the book of Romans. 
Authors such as Longfellow, Hawthorne, Shakespeare, Ruskin, and Irving all quote thousands of Bible references in their writings. Art has also been affected with over 117 world famous paintings by people such as Da Vinci, Rembrandt, and Michelangelo depicting scenes from both the Old and the New Testaments. Now, not only that, Christopher Columbus testified that it was Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, that prompted him to sail the ocean blue in 1492. That verse says, it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Now, all of that information might be interesting, but let's take the following into consideration as well. The Bible is written by 40 different authors coming from 19 different occupations, such as king, fishermen, doctors, farmers, shepherds, etc. It was written on three different continents, in three different languages, and spanning a period of 1,600 years. Then after it was completed, it fit together with no contradictions and in perfect harmony. But the Bible is a whole lot more than just a piece of literature. We have more manuscripts and copies of the Bible than of any literary, literary selection you could name. You see, Isaiah 40, verse 8 tells us that the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. We will fail us. Our material possessions will fail us, and the people that we love and care about will fail us. But the Bible promises to be there for us no matter what we might be going through, and that is just one aspect that makes it so unique. Instead of taking the Bible out of schools, off of money, and out of buildings, we should be putting it back in schools and relying on the Bible for everything and anything that we might be going through. Of the 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence, nearly half of them held a Bible or seminary degree. Ronald Reagan said that within the covers of the Bible are the answers for all of the problems that men face. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Beatty. Council President, Council Members, George McGrath. Tonight I'd like to speak about respect. Now, we've heard a lot of conversation tonight, which I was very happy to hear, from the group which is not in support of murdering babies. The idea that everyone should respect the woman's right to be able to abort a fetus, excuse me, that fetus is a child. Now, I believe that all of you are familiar, or at least you should be familiar with the fact that suicide is not an accepted practice in this country. It's something that people get arrested for, attempting to commit suicide. But here we have, well, that's my baby, so I'm going to murder it. And that's accepted. I think that that is the type of thought process which is driving this country right down the sewer, completely down the sewer. You, as the elected leadership for the city of Spokane, I hope will take a stance that says, hey, we are not a city that condones baby murder. We are not a city that condones the idea of anyone can say and do anything they want. You know, the Bible tells us many, many years ago, there was a flood, and it wiped out pretty much everybody but who was on the boat. Now, after the flood, a beautiful, beautiful rainbow appeared. And look at where the rainbow is used today. It's a perversion. It's used by, as this picture shows, the drag queens as they're reading at the public library to your children. It's used as a flag for the homosexuals, you know, the LGBT, whatever in the heck that garbage idea of uh, the perversion of our alphabet is today. And so I look at that and I say, where is the respect? We've all got the right to our own opinions. We've got a right to say 
pretty much what we think. But if what we are thinking goes into action, which is opposed to what the Bible tells us, then we are wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Council. Uh, my name is Gabriel Blomgren. I'm a pastor at Covenant Church. I'm also a teacher at Covenant Christian School. I'm also a basketball coach to many children there. Um, I'm also a worship leader for the Church of Planned Parenthood. Worship leader is just a fancy term for somebody who sings. That's it. I want to talk to you about one of the most famous singers ever. Born Araminta Ross in 1820, Maryland, she was one of eight children. Her parents, Benjamin Ross and Harriet Green, were full-blooded Africans and believed to belong to the Shanti tribe of West Africa, known for being warriors. Though most of her siblings were sold, Araminta managed to stay with her parents for much of her young life. By the time the prospect of being sold did come up, the owner of her family, Edward Brodus, died. It was during this time that Araminta discovered she was in fact free. Her mother had been freed by a previous owner but was never told. However, Araminta never pursued the issue because a lawyer informed her too much time had passed and her freedom wouldn't be upheld in court. When she reached adulthood, Araminta decided to take her mother's name. She also married a free, name, free man named John. Despite being married to someone free, Araminta still retained her slave status. She was rented out to another owner who did allow her to work away from his plantation for a price of $50 a year. Around 1849, two of Araminta's brothers heard that they were all likely to be sold into the Deep South as part of the domestic slave trade, during which slaves were often sold into territories and areas were settled and labor was needed. Fearing an even worse way of life, Araminta and her brothers ran away. While most know her name, many didn't know her name during the year she freed slaves. In fact, they didn't know she was a woman. The brave freedom fighter was known as Moses, and she had a $300 reward for her capture. Her calling card was a song she would sing while hiding in the fields. The song for some meant freedom is here. For some, it meant a damning word for the lack of courage to join the others. Can you imagine if she had not had the courage to sing out? Can you imagine how history would have been written had her voice been silenced? Praise the Lord Jesus, her song was never silenced. Thank you, Jesus, her voice set the captives free. Harriet Tubman is quoted as saying this, There are two things I have a right to, and these are death or liberty. One or the other I mean to have. No one will take me back alive. I shall fight for my liberty, and when the time has come for me to go, the Lord will let them kill me. She also said, I have heard their groans, just like these babies, and sighs, and seen their tears, and would give every drop of my blood into their veins to free them. Jesus is quoted as saying to those who sang out, he said and answered unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. I'm going to keep singing, just like those birds. I can't be silenced. Thanks, Mr. Blomgren.